So now I want to work out what the Jeffreys prior is in terms of the parameter psi, which represents our odds. So that's just theta over one minus theta. So to do that, we need to firstly work out what the likelihood is in terms of psi. And that's easy to do because we already know what it is in terms of theta. L of theta given x is just equal to, for a Bernoulli, theta to the power x times one minus theta to the power one minus x, which we can rewrite in terms of our parameter psi given x is just, well, we know that theta is equal to psi over one plus psi. So that just gives us psi over one plus psi to the power x times one minus theta, you can work out is just equal to one over one plus psi to the power one minus x, which if you then collect sort of like powers here, you just obtain psi to the power x over one plus psi. And now that we have the likelihood, we can work out what the log likelihood is easy enough. So that's just log of L. That's just X times the log of Psi minus the log of one plus Psi. Our next step is to differentiate that with respect to Psi. So we just then get X over Psi because we've got the natural log here, minus one over one plus Psi. If we differentiate that again, we get the second derivative, d2l over d psi squared, and that's just equal to minus x over psi squared plus one over one plus psi squared, all squared here. We know that the information matrix, which here is just a scalar psi, uh, in terms of psi, is just equal to minus the expected value of d2l over d psi squared, which is easy enough to work out if you recognize that the expected value of x is just theta, and theta is psi over one plus psi. So we just obtain psi over psi squared, one plus psi, so there's psi's cancel, and then minus one over one plus psi all squared, which you can simplify, and that just simplifies to one over psi, one plus psi. And sorry, I've just realized there should be a squared term here, which means that the Jeffreys prior in terms of psi is just equal to one over psi to the power of half times one plus psi, which can just be written as shorthand, psi to the power minus a half times one plus psi to the power minus one. And I should say that the Jeffreys prior here, it's really just proportional to this. This is just the functional dependence. And we can plot what Jeffrey's prior looks like here in terms of psi. And again, we're going to sort of obtain a result which is very much not a uniform prior. So it's just going to slope sort of downwards. It's a, it's a power curve. And so it's sort of asymptoting towards the uh, horizontal axis here. And again, this curve kind of makes sense in terms of aligning with the likelihood because if we flip our coin a large number of times and it comes up tails all of those times, or a large number of them, then feasibly there are only a narrow range of values of psi that could generate that outcome, which is where psi is close to zero. And so in that case, we're much more confident about our value of psi because we know that there are only a few values of psi that could feasibly have generated that data. Whereas compare that with psi being equal to one, in this case, we're much less confident in terms of the values of psi that could have generated that sort of data because it would just sort of be x is a mix of roughly equal numbers of zeros and ones, which could have been generated by a much larger range of psi. And so we're less confident in that and accordingly, we assign less weight in our prior towards that. So all that remains for us to do is to work out the Jeffreys posterior in terms of psi. And that's pretty straightforward to do because we know what the likelihood is. P of X given psi is just equal to psi to the power X over one plus psi. And we know that Jeffreys prior 
is just given by p of psi being proportional to psi to the power minus a half times 1 plus psi to the power minus 1. And our posterior is just equal to or proportional to the products of the likelihood and the prior. So p of psi given x is just proportional to psi to the power x minus a half over 1 plus psi all squared. And if you check back, that's exactly the same as the posterior that we obtained through the other route, where first of all we worked out the Jeffreys prior in terms of theta, then worked out the Jeffreys, uh, I should probably say prior, Jeffreys posterior in terms of theta, and then applied the change of variables rule, in other words our Jacobian, to work out the posterior in terms of psi, and that was exactly the same as we obtained via the other route, where we first of all worked out the Jeffreys prior in terms of psi, then worked out the Jeffreys posterior in terms of psi, which is the same as what we obtained via the first route.